Okay, today I want to show um, how to use PHP a programming language, server-side scripting, along with HTML to create a web-based application that uh, we can then use the PHP to access a MariaDB database uh, running uh, on uh, the local host. And I'm going to use PHP my admin to administer that. Um, and then I'm going to show you how to use PHP programming language uh, in the web-based app to connect to uh, the MariaDB server to the database and then update that database to add a sales representative using uh, SQL. All right, and so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to, well, I'm running uh, OpenSUSE Linux Leap 42.2 here, Plasma 5. I'm going to go ahead and uh, launch into the MariaDB server. So I'm going into the terminal. All right, and I have a an alias that connects to it that I created. So I'm going to bring up that interface. I'm going to manage servers and go out and let's start the Apache web server. We'll need that for PHP my admin. And let's go ahead and, and start the MySQL database as well. So both of those are in starting mode right now. <clears throat> Apache is now running and MySQL server now running. Let me minimize that and minimize the terminal. All right, we're going to need a couple of other applications in addition to a web browser. So let's go out. I'm going to use the Chromium web browser for this uh, demonstration. So let me go ahead and open that up. All right, and let me go out to second desktop here. And uh, all right, let me go ahead and close that. All right, and then I'm going to need a text editor as well. I'm going to use my favorite, which is Kate. Bringing that up now. Okay, and so we've got Kate up, we've got the browser up, we've got the server running. Uh, next thing we need to do is we need to open up the files so that I can take a look at the files and show you what we're going to be using. Uh, but let's go out on the server and get to the PHP my admin first. So let me open that up. Uh, and let's see, where's Chromium running? Here it is. And what I'll need to do now is type in localhost forward slash. I've got everything in a folder called webtech. And it's going to bring up this uh, website, and I click on uh, that folder there, and that folder, and the completed folder here, and um, click on, let's see, wrong one. There we go. And so the first file we need to look at is an HTML file, and it's called Add Sales. Uh, person.html. Now, uh, this is the website itself, but let's look at the file uh, structure here that uh, was created. So let me go file open in Kate. I'm going to open that in a text editor. Let's go to the location where MariaDB database is kept. Uh, and these files are kept as well. So that is in OPT, LAMP, and uh, let's see, htdocs and webtech coursework chapter 14 and completed code exercises and then the uh, location of that file is in this particular one right here I believe, nope, wrong one Let me go back That's not it either. Uh, oh, it's up here. I'm sorry. Wrong one. Okay, so it's add sales uh, person HTML. So I'm going to click and open it. And let me bring it up so we can magnify it a little bit, zoom in so we can see what we're doing here. Okay, so this is the HTML file. And you can see we have the HTML uh, tag, the head tag, got the title. I've got the link out to the CSS file that I'm using called sample and we can take a look at that as well. Uh, then the body tag here and I've got a new sales staff entry form 
Uh, and then I've got a paragraph that says, All new sales staff will receive the job title sales and an hourly wage of $8.25. I've got a form here that points to the PHP file called addsalesperson.php. We're using the post, post method here for posting this in PHP on the Apache web server. So that means we'll get a post array here uh, for any forms that we create. Uh, here I've got uh, an input type of text field that I named employee ID. I've got another text field of size 20 uh, of type text that's called first name and one called last name of the same uh, attributes. So I've got two, three text fields, one for employee ID, one for first name, and one for last name that the user will input. And then I've supplied a submit button here. All right, so that's the HTML file. Now let's go out and look at the PHP file that's going to do the processing here. And so here it is. And so let me pull it up. And let me zoom in on it as well. OK. So the top part of it is the same as the HTML file. Now we get into the PHP code block. And so as you know, for connecting to a MariaDB or a MySQL database, you're going to need four parameters here for the connection function. Uh, for the MySQLi underscore connect and so we need the server variable which is localhost, the user variable I call WBIP, the password variable I just chose was WBIP123, make it simple, and then the database variable is the actual database name called test. Now the connect variable okay, uh, is assigned the MySQLi underscore connect function that has four parameters in that function. The server parameter, user parameter, password parameter, and database. So let's go on down. And then I have a selection statement here that says if not connection, not connect, in other words if we don't connect, then we're going to die here, we're going to kill the program with an error message that says cannot connect to the database DB, which points to this on server server which points to this and then using username user pointing to this variable its value and then I'm going to concatenate that with the mysqli underscore connect error number corresponding to the error that we would receive if we don't connect to that uh, particular uh, server and then concatenate that with the mysqli underscore connect error number itself okay the error itself rather all right, so all of that within the curly braces uh, will get uh, executed if this is true. If this is false, on the other hand, in other words, we do connect, then we will take the employee ID variable and we will assign that the post array of the employee ID from the HTML file. We will take the first name variable and we will assign that to the post array of the first name uh, field uh, input on the HTML file. And then we will take the last name variable and we'll assign that to the post array of last name. And then we're conducting a user query here, which is assigned uh, the SQL command insert into personnel. And the personnel table uh, is one of the tables that we have in that database called test. We have a personnel table and we have an employee or a timesheet table rather. So a personnel and timesheet. So we're inserting into the personnel table the employee ID, first name, last name, job title, hourly wage, and we're giving it the values of the employee ID variable value, the first name uh, variable value, and the last name variable value. We're giving it a title, which is a string called sales, and we're giving it a, a value of 8.25 here, okay, as a string. And then <clears throat> we're taking the result variable and we're assigning that the MySQL underscore or I underscore query of co which has two parameters which is the connection itself and the user query which is up here okay and so the result then is indicated here then we have another uh, selection down below that says if not result in other words we don't get a result then we die here uh, in the curly braces could not successfully run the query uh, on user query okay, from the database 
mysqli underscore error function of the connection. And so we'd get the actual error that occurs. If this is not true, then we do the else down below, which gives the program a, another option, which is to print and new personnel, add new personnel record in H1 tag. Print the following record was added to the personnel table. Another paragraph, then we create the table with no border, and we have an employee ID uh, column here. And in the first column, we have the employee ID, uh, or second column, rather, we have the employee ID value. Back in the first column, we have the first name. Second column, we have the first name variable value. Back in the first column, last name, and then the last name variable value. And then first column, job title, and the string sales, just the word sales, and then the hourly wage, and then $8.25, which is uh, just a string, basically. Uh, and then we end the table, and then we close the connection with the mysqli underscore close connect function, which takes one variable, uh, one parameter, rather, which is the connect variable here. Okay, that closes the connection. Then we close the PHP uh, code block with the closing tag, close the body, close the form, all right, and or close the PHP file. So those are the two files that we're looking at. All right, so let's go back out to uh, here, and let me open up another tab, and let's take a look at the MySQL, uh, I mean the Maria, MariaDB, rather, uh, database using PHP my admin. So let me type in localhost forward slash PHP my admin. That's how we get into it. And it opens up. Here is the test database. I'm going to go ahead and click on it and open it up. And you can see we have two tables. We have the personnel table and we have a timesheet table. I'm going to go ahead and open up the personnel table because that's the one we were dealing with. And you can see here that we have records, uh, we have about 10 records in here, uh, with various, let me go ahead and see if I can zoom in on this one as well. Yeah, there we go. And we have uh, these records here showing the uh, employee ID, the first name, the last name, the job titles. We have sales, managers, accountant, uh, receptionists, etc., etc., cleaners, and then we have an hourly wage associated with each of those employees uh, in in the company. Okay, all right. So what I'm going to do now is go back out to the query itself, back to the form. And this is the HTML page that we looked at in Kate. And let's uh, well, one thing I forgot to do is let's go back to the table real quick, and you can see the employee IDs run from like one, two, three, four, five. On up to like one two three six three, so I'm going to use one two three six four as the next employee ID. All right, so I'm going to add in a new employee. What we're doing is creating a new sales employee here using PHP query in order to add this record to the database, the MariaDB database. So I'm going to have one two three six four six four as the um, employee ID. Uh, I'm going to call this person Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart. And when I hit the submit button, what it's going to do is it should add a record to the MariaDB database, adding Martha Stewart with this employee ID number, okay, as a salesperson. So this is called a new sales staff entry form. So let me go ahead and click submit. And when I do, I get a response back from the PHP Hypertext preprocessor with a page that says add a, a new personnel record. The following record was added to the personnel table. Employee ID number 12364, first name Martha, last name Stuart, job title sales, and hourly wage of $8.25. So if I go back out to the table, the MariaDB table, I have to refresh this because it doesn't automatically refresh. And I can do that just by refreshing the browser here. So let me do that. And you can see that, uh, let me go ahead and bump that back up. All right, so we can see it. And let me come over and scroll down. And you can see we have a new record now. All right, 
So we have uh, employee ID 12364. Martha Stewart here has been added. And uh, she's a salesperson because that was a sales form entry. And she has a uh, uh, an hourly wage of $8.25 added. So now we did not manually manipulate the MariaDB database. Um, uh, we actually added this record via PHP uh, using the form entry and uh, having PHP um, file that we created process the data by connecting to the MariaDB database, running a query, and producing the results and injecting uh, that record into the personnel table. So this was successful. Um, this has been a demonstration of how to manipulate the MariaDB or MySQL database using PHP, a server-side programming language. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close uh, the table. I'm going to go ahead and close uh, this form here. So let's close it out altogether. And then I'm going to come in here and um, don't need this open anymore. I'm going to go ahead and close Kate. All right, and let's close those two files out. Uh, then we're going to go back up to our server interface. I'm going to stop all processes. So I'm going to stop the MariaDB database server and the Apache web server as well. When both of those stop, and this is the graceful way of doing it, uh, it will say stopped. And here we go. I'm going to go ahead and close that and say yes. And then since we launched this in the terminal, now we can type exit in the terminal close it and this ends the presentation. Have a nice day.